It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of April 26, 1996. we got five movies to look at today, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. And we'll start off with John claude Van Damme's latest film, which he actually directed as well. Uh, this is The Quest. The best fighters will meet to compete in secret for a dragon made of solid gold. Here at the Lost City, we greet our hero. What? Universal Pictures present John claude Van Damme in The Quest. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, April 26. I mean, give the film some credit. At least it's not as bad as the last action movie we had an action star directing the film, uh, Steven Seagal, with On Deadly Ground. I mean, that movie was abysmal on so many levels. But this, this isn't half bad. I mean, it's not great. It's just, it's just, it's got some good ideas to it. It has some interesting concepts to it. The set design actually isn't that bad, honestly. Some of the performances overall aren't terrible, but, um... And the action sequences, they're actually kind of interesting. They're actually kind of engaging. They're actually kind of interesting here. It's just that the script overall just doesn't work very well. Uh, I guess John claude Van Damme doesn't really have the quite, quite the right attitude to be a director at this point. I think this was just something that was an award for, for Universal making... For his last two films, making Universal a ton of money, like Time Cop and Sudden Death. And he's tried to get back into directing for a couple of years now. He's had this movie called Frenchie that he's been trying to do. I think it started filming all the way back in 2008. And it's now coming up on 15 years, and that movie has yet to see the light of day. I don't know what's going on with that, but also a lot of people kind of compare it to Bloodsport, and you can definitely see that. It's not as over-the-top and ridiculous as Bloodsport is. It's trying to take itself a little too seriously, and... Like I said, it's not a terrible movie. There are concepts where it's just like, I can see where they're going, but it's not really a good movie overall. It's a film that's just kind of like, you look, you watch it, and it's just kind of like, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it still isn't great either. It's kind of just another largely forgettable film, honestly. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, really, that's pretty much all you could say about it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either, so... Quick one on that one, that's the quest. Let's go on to the next movie, and that is Janine Garofalo and Uma Thurman starring in the comedy The Truth About Cats and Dogs. It's just you and a cat, and the next thing you know, 40 candles on your birthday cake. What does that mean? In life, there are people like Noel. You burp and guys think it's adorable, you puke and they line up to hold your hair back. That's not true. And then there's the rest of us. Three years, no sex. One can survive, you know, this is the electronic age. Abby didn't know she had what it took. How about you need this for a drink? I'm five foot ten. And blonde, hard to miss. Until she got in over her head. You have to help me. I just want you to be me when he comes in here, okay? Uh, hi, Abby. Hi. Wish you were here. I wish you were here, too. I'm just confused. One minute she's one thing. I don't know what I'm doing. The next minute she's something else completely. <laughs> but only Brian. He loves you. You're the boys. I'm just body. Help! Could open her eyes to the truth. I love Abby. It doesn't matter what she looks like. The truth about cats and dogs. I just took my shirt off. Really? Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, April 26th at theaters everywhere. So you got another one of those trailers where you look at it and you think, okay, we've seen this story done over and over again. It's a typical romantic comedy trope. You have somebody else who actually falls in love with the main character and it's a complete and it, it gets caught in a love triangle and so on and so forth. And that trailer really didn't really do a whole lot to convince a lot of people that this was probably going to be any good. But, I mean... When you watch the movie itself, it actually is a lot better than I think people give it credit for. It's actually kind of charming what they do here. It's basically a modern reinterpretation of Cyrano de Bergerac. They change some things around here. You've got Jeannie Garofalo as the woman that wants to fall in love with this guy, played by Ben Chaplin. But she needs the help of her friend, played by Uma Thurman. And it is actually a pretty sweet little comedy. It doesn't do anything too groundbreaking, doesn't do anything too unique, but... You really do like these characters a lot. Uma Thurman is actually kind of a fun character to watch. Janine Garofalo gives a pretty solid performance. And Ben Chaplin actually does a pretty good job playing the love interest in here. And you also have Jamie Foxx in here as well. It's a very it's a very solid film overall. And I think Janine Garofalo doesn't get a whole lot of credit for this performance in here. She actually is really, really good. I think she's actually kind of the heart that makes this movie actually worth the watch. She really is showing a lot of range in this performance. She's actually very funny in here. She's very charismatic. She works very well with everyone around her. It's a really solid movie. I know she was actually kind of dissatisfied with the film itself overall years after it came out. 
she said it was soft and corny, and the soundtrack made it, made you want to puke. And I don't know. I mean, she's in t I mean, what am I supposed to say? She's entitled to her opinion. She made the damn movie. I'm just the one that saw it. And I thought, I thought she did a pretty good job in it. That's just my personal opinion on it. But um, I mean, yeah, I thought she was really one of the strongest things about the movie. It really does give her a chance to branch out as an actress. And I kind of wanted to see more movies where she was the leading actress in it. And I, there's been a couple of them after this movie came out. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It was a fun little comedy. Um, that's the truth about cats and dogs for you. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Sunset Park. Here we go again. It's another movie that's trying to capture the success of Dangerous Minds, and this time let's replace me, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Tom Berenger, and let's put Rio Perlman from Cheers in the leading role, and let's make it about a high school basketball team that's struggling in this in this wrong side of the tracks neighborhood in New York City, and uh, really, let's really all you could say about this movie is that it's pretty much just. Dangerous Minds meets Coach Carter, and Coach Carter did this a whole lot better with Samuel L. Jackson in it. Uh, I don't know, man. I saw this one a long, long time ago, so I very, rarely remember a lot of this. And a lot of this I don't remember really liking. There are very good actors in this movie. Rhea Perlman can be very funny. She can be a very solid actress. Terrence Howard, this is one of his earliest film appearances. You also have uh, Carol Kane in here as well. Probably, again, probably miscast in this, but there's just so much about this movie that it's hard is in the right place, but man, there's just way too much in this that just doesn't work whatsoever. It's just a generic, it's a generic film that's trying to capture the success of Dangerous Minds, and it's trying to be a sports, an inspiring sports story, and it just doesn't really have anything there to really make it stand out on its own. It's a largely forgettable film. I haven't seen it in many, many years, and I don't ever want to see it again. I don't think it's any, there's anything worth watching in this movie ever again, so... That is Sunset Park. Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Nick Nolte in Mulholland Falls. This is my town. These cops are on the verge of a conspiracy. We're investigating the homicide. This is about to turn bad, isn't it? That may cost them their jobs. You know where the case takes it. Not if it takes you here, you don't. Their families and their lives. Put your hands in there, you will be shot. Some people die so that others can live. It's the cornerstone of civilization. Mulholland Falls starts Friday, April 26th. I mean, if the best thing you could say about your movie is that Jennifer Connelly gets pretty naked at the hell naked at the beginning of the movie, that's not really a good sign that this movie is going to stand out for the most part. I mean, that's the one thing that you take from this movie, honestly, if you watch it, is that Jennifer Connelly looks hot as hell in this. I mean, it's not career opportunities hot, but it comes pretty damn close. But other than that, though, the rest of the movie itself is. Okay, I guess. It's nothing great. It's nothing terrible. It's a decent gangster flick. I'd probably put it on the same level as something like Gangster Squad, which was another movie that was highly ambitious but ended up not being as great at the end. And the cast itself is okay here. Nick Nolte, Melanie Griffin, Chas Momentary, Michael Madsen, Chris Penn, Jennifer Connelly. They're all doing the best they can with this. But they're working with some pretty formulaic material script-wise. If you've ever seen most gangster flicks... This doesn't really stick out at all. There's nothing really about this that makes it stand out on its own. Plus, gangster flicks need to be much faster paced than this, and there's a lot of dull moments in this movie. Slow paced scenes that never really go anywhere. They could have been easily axed out of here and nobody would have noticed. It's a largely forgettable movie. It's a mixed bag of a film. I didn't hate it. I'm just very neutral on it. I'm glad I saw it. Thought it was just alright, but then again, it's just the only, the only thing that really stood out to me were the opening credits, and that's because of Jennifer Connelly, but everything else... Not so much. So, uh, yeah, that's Mulholland Falls. On to the last movie, and that is Cemetery Man. I'm the watchman of the Buffalora Cemetery. My name's Francesco Della Morte. I don't know how the epidemic started. All I know is that some people, on the seventh night after their death, come back to life. It's true what they say, but the dead come back to life here at night. With your consent... I'd like to marry Nagy. Not as long, dear, as I've got a breath in my body. We'll fix that right away. Stop killing the dead. 
Why don't you just kill the living? Are you listening to me? Don't you believe me? No. Tough. I mean, this is right up there with old school Peter Jackson, even though he has nothing to do with this movie. I mean, Peter Jackson meets Sam Raimi. I mean, it's this movie looks incredible. I've never seen this movie before, but it's another one of those ones, kind of like with The Last Supper, that I watched the trailer for, and I was just kind of like, where can I find a copy of this movie? This looks like a pretty damn good movie. You see Rupert Everett, one of his early film roles, he plays Francisco Del Monte, or Del Monte Del Amor, or however you want to look at it, but... um. I mean, I don't know. It looks like it could be something pretty interesting. You got Derek Jacoby playing Death a stop, with a stop-motion animation there. It looks like a modern-day B-movie. The, the people who made this clearly took a lot of inspiration for what Sam Raimi did with the Evil Dead movies. And, um, yeah, honestly, I really want to see this movie now. I want to look for this movie. And, um... Wait, is it Dylan Dog? I just saw Dylan Dog on the poster there. Is this actually a Dylan Dog movie, or... Or maybe it's made by the same guy who made Dylan Dog. Because I remember they did the Dylan... Yeah, it is made by the same creator that did Dylan Dog. I'm, I'm sorry, I just found that out right as I was looking at it. I saw Dylan Dog on there and I thought, is this a Dylan Dog movie? Because I know they made that one with Brandon Routh about 10 years ago. That wasn't very good, but... Um, no, I guess this isn't it. It's made by the same man that did create Dylan Dog. So, there you go. That's just kind of... A, that's just me out of, out of nowhere just looking up the research there for myself. But, um... But yeah, like I said, this is something I actually do want to see at some point. Um, maybe I'll check it out one day, but uh, hopefully I can find it somewhere. Um, that's really all I got for you. That's Cemetery Man. And so on that note, that wraps up this edition of Time About the Movies. We finally get into the summer of 96 on the next episode, May, thir with May 3rd. We've got eight movies to look at, including The Craft, Samuel L. Jackson is leading an all-star cast in The Great White Hype, Sharon Stone in The Last Dance, The Paul Bearer, Pamela Anderson in Barbed Wire, I Shot Andy Warhol, Man of Butterfly, Open Season. We've got eight movies to look at on the next episode, and we'll delve into those on the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I will see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and until then, as always, take care.